Now on 76ers Insider, Spectrum Nights. In this half hour, we'll take a behind the scenes look at an evening at the Spectrum and show you some places and some faces you may not know about. We'll also show you what a Spectrum Night would be like if you were a Sixer. I'm Tony Irving, and we'll follow a Sixer on one of his Spectrum Nights. And we'll take a look back at some of the great Spectrum Nights in the Sixers' 26-year history at Broad and Patterson. I'm John Slobodkin. I'm your host for 76ers Insider, John Gurevich. Stay with us. It's all coming up. This month's program is sponsored by Travel One, the official travel agency of the 76ers, with offices throughout the Delaware Valley for all your business and vacation travel needs. Travel One guarantees you the lowest fares, the highest level of service, and no surprises. Basketball at the speed of sight. Hope my Sixers are at home tonight. Get my tickets for the very next flight. Sixers at the speed of sight. Sixers fans, get ready to roll back the clocks to the 1960s. On Wednesday, January 13th, both the Philadelphia 76ers and Golden State Warriors will be wearing uniforms from the 1966-67 championship season. It's nostalgia night at the Sixers. Call 336-2000 today for your tickets. Welcome to the January edition of 76ers Insider. Our theme this month is Spectrum Nights. You know, the Sixers have been at Broad and Patterson since 1967, and it's expected that work will begin soon on Spectrum 2. And by 1995, the Sixers should be playing in their new home. In the meantime, the existing Spectrum is alive and well and full of many interesting stories, some of which we are going to be showing you in this half hour coming up. Right now, though, to get things started, we have the Comcast Metrophone Insider Quiz. There have been many outstanding individual basketball performances at the Spectrum over the years, some by 76ers players, some by opponents. Three of the best of those have been the three times one player scored 50 points in a single game. The first time a player scored 50 points in an NBA game at the Spectrum was on April 1st, 1970. It didn't happen again for more than 13 years on November 14th, 1984. And the third time a player scored 50 points at the Spectrum was November 16th, 1988. Who are the three men who scored 50 points in one game at the Spectrum? The answers to the Comcast Metrophone Insider Quiz coming up later in the show. Comcast Metrophone is the market leader in cellular technology. Well, we'd like to welcome a new reporter producer to 76ers Insider. Allow me to introduce you to John Slobotkin. John has been one of the behind the scenes producers here at PRISM for a number of years, and we had to do a little bit of persuading, but we've gotten John to join us on our small but dedicated 76ers Insider crew. For his first project, we had John dig deep into the PRISM video treasure chest and pluck out some of the outstanding moments in the Sixers Spectrum history. And if you listen closely, you'll even get some of the answers to the Insider Quiz here. The theater stands quietly, alone with its memories. From the University of Massachusetts, number six, captain of the Philadelphia 76ers, Julius the Doctor. The passion play begins, filled with drama, comedy, romance, and almost always, a happy ending. Since christening the Spectrum floor in 1967, the Sixers have defined the home court advantage. Legends who've graced the stage with inspiring performances each stand as a testament to the domination at Broad and Patterson. Wilt Chamberlain and Billy Cunningham were the first true stars of the Spectrum Hardwood, with Billy C. the first to top the 50-point plateau in 1970. Julius Irving would then cradle the franchise within his huge hands and lead the Sixers on their most glorious home court run. 
25 seasons of spectrum domination are highlighted by a golden era. It began nearly 20 years ago, after the Sixers shook off their last home court losing season in 1975. Over the next 10 years, they won an astounding 83% of their spectrum games, averaging 34 home wins a season. Despite the success, the Spectrum has never been considered one of the NBA's true landmarks. Mystique's about a few buildings, but not this one. This is not a Mystique building, this is Mystique players. This is when you have uh, Dr. J, Malone, Barkley, you know, the teams that they've had, that's what made this. This was our turf. We, we were going to play as hard as we could. Uh, for as long as we could, and, and uh, you were going to be in a war. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't a moment out on the floor that we didn't think that we, that we were not going to win. We always felt in our building we were going to walk out of here with a W. More than any player of his era, Julius Irving embodied the energy of a Sixers home game. When he held the ball, the possibilities were limitless. From the breathtaking Mother's Day move to point number 30,000, it was Dr. J who always gave the home crowd its money's worth. 30,000 points. He needed 36, and he got them all tonight. One year later, a Spectrum farewell befitting a king. I thank you. I love you. Fans, forever and a day, thank you from the bottom of my heart. A pair of contrasting styles provided more moments to savor. The number one scoring performance by a Sixer in Spectrum history was pure sweat and toil. The blue collar ethic of Moses Malone was on display this night back in 1984, an overtime effort netting 51 points. And then there was Charles. Barkley delighted the Spectrum faithful with eight years of heroics and histrionics including a 46-point night in 1988 and a 31-point performance without missing a shot. Yet some of the memories are still bitter pills to swallow. This 1968 Game 7 loss to the Celtics signaled the end of a dynasty which never truly began. And the ultimate irony, the only league championship ever claimed on this floor did not belong to Philadelphia. Great Spectrum Knights and those that might have been. Game six of the 1980 NBA Championship, the Sixers and Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers were without star center Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So I, like the other 18,000 Sixers fans in the building that night, figured game seven back in LA was a foregone conclusion. But what happened next was pure magic. A 20-year-old rookie named Irvin Johnson Jr. jumped center and took its stage. Playing in what Magic would later call his best game ever, he scored 42 points, literally carrying the Lakers to the title. The Spectrum became Johnson's first official stop on his road to the Hall of Fame. I can remember flying out uh, from L.A. to Philly, and uh, it's kind of interesting that he, uh, without anyone saying anything, went and sat in Kareem's designated seat. And his first shot is in the post. You know, a turnaround hook shot. So it turned out to be a, you know, a very, very special game for him. Images of greatness past, serving as crystal clear illustrations for the future. The most vital steps to recovering lost glory begin at home. For 76ers Insider, I'm John Slobodkin. Coming up next on 76ers Insider, we'll be spending time with a Sixer on one of his spectrum nights. Just try to get my touchdown, first of all. And then, you know, as you know, I get, by the time the game starts, hopefully I'm loose enough where I can come in the game or whatever and uh, make some shots. Travel One and Prism are giving you an added incentive to watch Sixers games. Tune in and you can win tickets to future games and become a finalist for a grand prize trip for two to London, Australia, or the Far East. Watch the Sixers on Prism for the Around the World with Travel One contest. An NBA athlete's body takes a pounding through the course of a season. I'm Dr. Neil Liebman, the team chiropractor for the Philadelphia 76ers. I work with several of the Sixers to make sure they're tuned for peak performance. 
and I work with all kinds of people, young and old, to make sure they're healthy. Put the Sixers team chiropractor to work for you. See Dr. Neil Lieben at Advanced Chiropractic Center. The Sixers do. Chiropractic care keeps me feeling great. Barton Fink, Beetlejuice, Birdie, Black Robe, The Commit, Curly Sue, Eyewitness, Final Analysis, Free Jack, For the Boy, Grand Canyon, Home Alone, Hot Shot, JFK, The Last Boy Scout, Madame Bovary, Meeting Venus, Other People's Money, Point Break, Ricochet, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Sleeping with the Enemy, Spies Like Us, Strictly Business, The Super, Time After Time, Truly Madly Deeply, 29th Street, Until the End of the World, Prism, the channel with a better variety of movies. Every month on 76ers Insider, we bring you an update on where things stand with the Sixers, our Insider Chronicle. And where things stand with the team right now is on much, much firmer ground than it did a few weeks ago. Since struggling at the beginning of the season, the Sixers have played some solid basketball. The big win was in Chicago on December 19th. Manute Bowl was inserted into the starting lineup at the last minute because of Andrew Lang's ankle injury. Percy Hawkins scored 24 points. And Clarence Weatherspoon surpassed the 20-point mark for the first time, tallying 21. The win in Chicago is the first of three victories in a four-game stretch for the Sixers, a stretch that seems to have gotten the players believing in themselves. Uh, yeah, you can say that. I think um, you know, feeling a lot more comfortable uh, with the rotation. Uh, you know, we're playing very aggressive. We're starting to talk on defense, help each other out. I think uh, turnovers has hurt us uh, in the past, and uh, remembering the turnovers made in the ball game, uh, we'll have a better chance to win. What the Sixers are looking for now is consistency. More of Manute Bowl's solid defensive play. Continued scoring off the bench from Ron Anderson. Progress in the ongoing development of rookie Clarence Weatherspoon, who already at times has been a force. And consistent scoring from Hersey Hawkins and Jeff Hornacek. Hersey put together a string of five straight 20-point games in mid-December, and Jeff got on a roll on the Western trip just before New Year's. With night in and night out play like that, the Sixers still have a chance to become a good basketball team this year. Ironically, here we are talking about Spectrum Knights, and the Sixers have won more games on the road than they have at home. No Sixers team has ever gone through a season with more road wins than home wins, and no NBA team at all has done that in the last 16 years. Okay, what would a home game be like if you were a player? We put Tony Irving together with reserve forward Kenny Payne, and try to find out. As the LA Clippers go to their locker room, the jersey of Kenny Payne is idle. The time is about 5.30 as Payne's teammates make their way to the locker room. What's going on? On a night when the Clippers are in town, what is Kenny Payne doing? Clipping his toenails. Every player has his ankles wrapped by trainer Mike Abdenor. Because of a sprained right thumb, Payne also has his hand wrapped. He leaves tickets for his friends with one of the locker room attendants. Now it's time to get dressed. In the meantime, he jokes with Eddie Lee Wilkins, who's in the process of removing a back brace. No, actually, this is, uh, this is what you call a blubber buster. <laughs> <laughs> what you call a hey, where you get that at, Eddie? This? Oh. You know, Italy. Right by from All right, how much? Ten dollars. Payne's bid isn't high enough. Eddie Lee wants 25. Meanwhile, I'm telling Hersey Hawkins Man, that dude. Kenny Payne will be the focus of our January Insider. Kenny Payne? Yeah, Kenny Payne. That's what I said. Why am I Kenny Payne? Payne? I know. The honky tonk man. Man, you want. You, know, you want. You've always been in your corner, baby. So it's just need some play. What you want from me, huh? The time is now 6.20 as Payne leaves the locker room. At the end of the ramp, he meets the agent for former teammate Derek Smith and former NBA great Bill Walton now doing analysis on the Clippers broadcast. Then it's off to the court to warm up. He's the first sixer on the court. First thing I'm doing basically is trying to get a feel for the ball and get, get a rhythm going and uh, get some shots up, break a sweat, and um, you know get my form right so that um, 
you know, as I go on, I get more moving, moving around, shooting a little bit, and I go out on range. I start out a little closer and just try to get my touch down, first of all. And then, you know, as you know, I get by the time the game starts, hopefully I'm loose enough where I can come in the game or whatever and uh, make some shots. Kenny Payne's strength is his outside shot. According to him, it's all in the genes. My dad said that uh, he gave that to me when I was born. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As a forward, Payne will match up with Kenny Norman and Danny Manning. Most of the guys that, that I guard are guys that I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, tonight, Ken Norman, Danny Manning, those type guys. And, and with Norman, he's a great offensive rebounder. You just have to keep him off the boards. He's a hustle player. One of the guys that just works hard and, you know, just gets the job done that way. Well, Manning is a little more talented. He does a lot of, he's a very good offensive player. After shooting around for about 30 minutes, Payne is finished. I caught up with him as he made his way back to the locker room. Now we go in the locker room and uh, Doug will go over the things that we need to do to uh, play well and uh, what the Clippers, you know, what their offenses and defenses are and uh, strategy to win. Okay, that usually happens about 15, usually about a half hour before the game time, right? Yeah. Okay, now, you, exactly. now there's always a tape running inside the locker room too. I never noticed anybody watching the tape. Do you ever watch the tape? We, we watch the tape, but you know, before we get dressed or while we're getting dressed, we really don't watch the tape, you know, during um, the talks or whatever. But uh, we watch it while we're getting dressed or whatever, just to you know see what they're doing or whatever. Okay, so once you go in the locker room, the next time we'll see you is when the team comes out to take the floor, right? Exactly. Okay. Good luck tonight. All right. Thank you. As the team takes to the floor, it's about 20 minutes before tap off. Payne will shoot some more, do some stretching, and then take a seat on the bench. The game has started, and Payne sits four seats away from coach Doug Moe. Tonight, he will play two minutes more than I did. Early in the second quarter, the Sixers trail by one. He played two minutes in the second half, took one shot, missed it, and it was back to the bench. Final score, the Clippers 125, 76ers 110. After the game, Payne chats with a friend. Then he makes his way down the tunnel, where he's supposed to get a ride with Greg Grant. In the meantime, we discuss tonight's game. We lost because we started playing well too late. And the Clippers are a very good offensive team. You like things went south in the second quarter. Yeah. We can't afford to have let down from us. We're not an overly talented team. Did you ever uh, have a point where you thought you'd get in the game? Oh, of course. I thought, you know, he would leave me in there a little longer, but. You know, he decided not to. When did you get it? Because that must have been when I was supposed to watch. It must yeah. have been second, second half. Yeah, was it? Yeah, it was second half. Not the hand. It felt all right. You know, it's getting better. So Kenny Payne's spectrum night amounts to two minutes of action. He never did locate Greg Grant, but Armin Gilliam is there to the rescue. In Gilliam's car, Payne finds some lip balm on the passenger seat. He wants to know if it's for women or men. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks, babe. All right. Take care of yourself. All right. Take care, Mr. Uh, AG. When 76ers Insider continues, a behind-the-scenes look at the sights and sounds of a Spectrum night. 29, right up the steps. Right up. Once again this year, when the 76ers go on the road, Travel One is the company that books all their flights, their hotels, everything. I've got to tell you, this is my eighth year traveling with the 76ers. Travel One always gets it right. Use Travel One when you go on the road. Basketball at the speed of sight. Hope my Sixers are at home tonight. Get my tickets for the very next flight. Sixers at the speed of sight. Sixers fans save this day Saturday, January 16th, because the Detroit Pistons are coming back to town. Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lame here, and the rest of the bad boys will be here to take on the Sixers, and it's adult bag night, so be sure to be one of the first 6,000. You'll get an official Sixers gym bag, compliments of AT&T. Call 336-2000 today. Still to come on 76ers Insider, the answer to this month's quiz, and our look at the sights and sounds of an evening at the Spectre. Right now, though, time for Insider Outsider, the monthly segment in which we take in someone from outside the immediate Sixers organization. And with blueprints on the table for Spectrum 2, 
Our January outsider is the Spectrum's Vice President of Operations, Jim Sima. Jim, where do things stand with uh, the Spectrum 2 project? Where are we with that now? Uh, well, we continue with the design phase. We're about 95% complete at this point. Um, all that we're waiting on now is the uh, uh, closing on financing, uh, getting a written commitment from several lending institutions on both the uh, construction loan and the uh, permanent loan. Once that's done and once we go through uh, closing, uh, we're ready to uh, build the, the new arena. Do you have a, a handle on when the financing will get wrapped up? Uh, we're hoping to get a written commitment uh, by the first of the year. Uh, and then closing will take um, about six to eight weeks. So we're looking at an early spring, late spring uh, construction uh, start, whatever's the prudent way of doing it uh, given the weather conditions. So adding that all together, when could we expect uh, the Spectrum 2 to be ready and, and open? Uh, we'll be open for the 95 uh, hockey and basketball seasons. We will probably have opened sometime before that. The, uh, and, and had an opportunity to go through several other events so that we've really shaken out the building and we're ready for the, uh, the two seasons to begin. So some two and a half years away if all goes as hoped. For now, there's a lot going on before and during Sixers games at the current spectrum, beyond the action on the court. A lot of people contributing, people who you may not think about when you come to watch a game, but people who are very much involved in what you wind up seeing. We put together a look behind the scenes to show you some of those people. So it's just a little damp right now. We'll give it about another five minutes or so, and we should be ready to go. All right, guys, let's send it out. If you got a free hand, let's have it. This forklift here has studs on it. That's the reason why it's on the ice. So the other forklift to bring the homosote and put it right on there, and he'll pick it up and put it in the spot where we need it. We're gonna be laying the homosote. They're starting off putting the radius. This is the west end radius. All the pieces are marked for the radius. They'll put in half of the radius and fill in the full sheets that they have. The next stack will come out. Will be the north side radius. They'll put that in and fill it in with the four by eight sheets. Start with letter H, laying the cord. This is the center row, the Sixers emblem. Four bolts per piece. One man drops the bolt, the next man comes along and screws it down. It takes about an hour and a half to get the cord entirely down. Sometimes it goes quicker, sometimes it's a little bit slower. I say on the average an hour and a half. Can we get started, please, before door opening? And have everybody's attention for just a few minutes. Just a couple reminders for tonight's event. Doors are going to open right at about 6.30. There will be no post game this evening. Attendance will be approximately eight to 10,000 people for tonight's event. What I'll do is meet with the staff beforehand, before the doors actually open. And I'll give them a, what we call a pre-event meeting or a pre-briefing to go over certain things that will happen during that event. Reminders of making sure that the aisles are patrolled once a quarter uh, to keep an eye out for anything that might be getting out of hand. Uh, also, uh, what time the doors are open, any giveaway items that will take place if there's a pre or post game that will take place that night as well. Peanuts and pretzels, dollar a bag. Chris, the north side supervisors. Go ahead, Chris. Tommy, are you all set over there? We're all set. Ready on the south. Let's open up. Abby. Jenna. Yeah. Take it, take it. Take it. Hi. How you doing, all right? Hi, how are you? 29. Right up the steps. Right oh. up here. And you enjoy the game. I go here. Right up the steps.
The uh, opening is something we did uh, over the summer. We planned a new animation with a new, with new music, and we wanted to give it a little bit more excitement this year uh, with uh, Doug Moe and the fast-paced uh, Sixers offense. So we picked a song and we chose uh, some visuals that would kind of go along with that and kind of get people uh, ready for what's about to happen. The organist is a vital part of the game, I think, because he kind of keeps the, the flow going. You know, when the guy's bringing it up the court, he can start in on a chant like, uh, you know, let's go Sixers or defense. Uh, I, re I really think those type of um, sound elements kind of bring the crowd into the game a little bit. On the Sixers side, uh, you appreciate some of the great players that have played here and that I've seen uh, from Dr. J and Charles and all the people that have passed through here. It's just a, it's a privilege to be able to watch all this. And over the last 16 years, I've played to a whole generation of fans, and it's, uh, it's great to hear uh, someone talk and who's now bringing their kids to the game and, and remember songs that I played and all that, and I was actually here for that. Coming up, the answers to the Comcast Metrophone Insider Quiz. What's wrong with too much of a good thing? Absolutely nothing. Prism where too much of a good thing is never enough. Time now for the answers to this month's Comcast Metrophone Insider Quiz. We had talked about some of the many great individual performances at the Spectrum over the years, and specifically about the three times in the Sixer Spectrum history a player scored at least 50 points in a single game. Those three times were 1970, 1984, and 1988. Our question was, who are the three men who rang up the 50-point games the three times it's been done at the Spectrum? Julius Irvin? Nope. Wilt Chamberlain? Nope. The first time was April 1st, 1970, and it was Billy Cunningham who scored 50 points in a playoff game against Milwaukee. The second time, November 14th, 1984, the man was Moses Malone who racked up 51 points in an early season game against Detroit. The last time it was done was November 16th, 1988, and it was done against the 76ers by Michael Jordan, who scored a Spectrum record 52. Back with another edition of the Comcast Metrophone Insider Quiz next month. Comcast Metrophone is the market leader in cellular technology. Well, we hope you enjoyed watching our show. We really hope we'll see you at the Spectrum for Sixers game sometime soon. I'll be there. In fact, if you have a chance, look up at the press box by the Prism banner and wave hello. 76ers Insider returns next month. The February edition debuts on Monday, February 8th, leading into Prism's game coverage that night of the Sixers game against the New York Knicks. Thanks for watching. 76ers Insider is brought to you in part by Sixers Team Chiropractor Neil Liebman. Chiropractic care keeps you feeling great. Find Dr. Liebman at Advanced Chiropractic Center on Browning Road in Pensauken.
sorority.